r slash ask reddit what was supposed to be the next big thing but totally flopped google glass i heard one of the biggest issues was that it was too heavy and felt uncomfortable but they literally couldn't make it any lighter i was creeped out by the commercials where that one guy identified a bartender's face and looked up her facebook to get details on her interests before hitting on her by using his google glass Edit, I cannot find the commercial so it may have been, as comments said, a spoof. I have a pretty distinct memory of my father and I watching it on normal TV as a commercial and both of us looking horrified at the end because it was playing off as Google Glass making you suave and smooth. So maybe I am mixing up the memory. 3D TV. Clearly remember thinking, these companies have lost their ducking minds. There's practically nothing 3D to watch. TV shows weren't available in 3D and weren't about to be filmed in 3D. Catalogs of old favorites would never be 3D. It's like the entire 3D industry was made for Avatar which, while a little bit neat, I never intended to watch a second time. Reminded me of all the bullshit hype surrounding DVDs at first. Like I could watch a scene from Terminator 2 from any angle I wanted. Like I'd be able to watch any movie scene from any angle I wanted. Never ever saw that feature utilized. Edit. Thank you for the helpful feedback on multi-angle viewing. Clearly, I did not watch enough porn DVDs. The any angle feature of DVD was a hugely touted feature and I think I only saw it on the DVD for the remake of my favorite Martian. Google Plus was supposed to be the answer to Facebook. That was a lesson on how not to handle hype. There was so much hype around Google Plus. It was infectious. But they refused to open it up to everyone and maintained a very hardline invite only system. Even once hype had peaked and there was a notable decline. Still they maintained a small invite only system. I remember by the time they decided to open it up to everyone the hype was well and truly dead and no one bothered with it. They should have cashed in when hype was high but they, I assume, got greedy. Thinking the hype would just infinitely increase and people wouldn't get bored waiting to get in. And then they tried to force it upon everyone by integrating it with YouTube. From what I've gathered in this thread Google threw a lot of shit to see if it would stickle mayo. That's basically their business model. I read somewhere, ages ago, that Google was willing to try just about anything their R&D people put out there, and if it didn't look like it was going to be a billion dollar return, they'd can it and move on. Also a lot of things they cancel have features that end up in their mainstream projects, like the conversation view, mail categories, trip thing, snizzing from inbox are all just part of Gmail now. I was at a conference about 12 years ago. Google presented a trial they were running in Africa because there was still very low percentage of smartphones and internet. So they had a call-in service, where people could call a number and ask for information in their local dialect. The operator would Google search it in English and translate the answer back to them in their native language. Not entirely relevant, but I like the trend where everybody wanted the smallest cell phone possible. For 20 years cell phones got smaller and smaller, often being the main selling point of the phone. Then all of sudden you couldn't watch videos on your phone. And almost overnight the trend reversed to larger is better. Now I want to watch Zoolander. His phone was hilariously small. Google Wave. It was supposed to replace email with a more collaborative approach. Essentially it was like a dynamically created discussion board you'd share with select people and you could have a more readable discussion than one with a bunch of forwards and cc's and the like. I thought it was a good idea. But it flopped big time and Google got rid of it after a few years. This was by far the best collaborative platform for planning trips I have experienced. I took a lot of backpacking trips. And we could all combine research, having a collected map, take stock of inventory etc in one place. Now I see people putting that stuff into a Google Doc and it kind of sucks by comparison. RIP Google Wave. I worked with a guy who used Wave. We collaborated on a personal project using it and it was a great tool. We also used it to plan some game nights at the office and it worked well for that too. Honestly I think it was almost ahead of its time. I see similar collaboration concepts now in Microsoft Teams and it's highly used by my company. Airship travel. These were the next, or some way to travel long distances. In fact the spire on top of the Empire State Building was meant as an anchoring point for airships. The Hindenburg kind of put a damper on it, though. Anyone remember the Archer episode where he was aboard a helium? 
I think. Airship and he kept smacking people for lighting cigarettes and stuff, repeatedly failing to understand it wasn't hydrogen, lol classic. Which part of this aren't you getting? Well, obviously the core concept, Lana. The segue, it was supposed to change the way everyone lived, the invention of the century or something like that, a really big deal. Then someone decided to take off the handle call it a hoverboard. Those boards don't work on water. Segways were supposed to revolutionize travel and replace the automobile. Now they are just used for guided tours for dorks and tourist traps. It cannot be overstated how much hype there was around the Segway, or how completely it failed to live up to the hype. Correction, the number of replies to this comment have forced me to consider that it can be overstated. For anyone who wasn't really around for that, it was marketed as the new form of transit before anyone saw pictures or had details about it. This isn't a case of here's an electric scooter thing and hype built up until it was released. It was mountains of pre-reveal hype followed by it all evaporating the instant people saw what it was. The Dark Universe Cinematic Universe, starting with 2017's The Mummy. I cannot think about that movie without remembering when they accidentally released an incomplete trailer. Best movie trailer ever. For those curious, https colon slash slash, yautu, bz0mgrwqb6w edit, mayo this blew up, thanks for all the rewards. I remember watching it when it first debuted and was so intrigued by the purposeful eerie effect without music, and then the bird hits the pilot, and I'm like oh they ducked up. That fake fat they put in chips in the 90s that made everyone poop their pants. Edit. Thanks for the silver. Obligatory of course my top comment is Ray. Anal leakage. I was on a boy scout camping trip when these were coming out. Someone walked around giving out free bags as a promotion. A bunch of young teenage boys getting a bag with a loose stool warning on it devolved into 24-48 hours of conversation about nothing but loose stool pretty quickly. Edit. Picture of label added http, colon slash slash, imgur, comma llgwzp6. I think the term used in the packaging was anal leakage. The Panama Papers edit, since I have your attention, I'd like to direct you to Isage's response here. Seriously, the sad thing is, we all knew it would be like this. Another sad thing is that it is all still happening. Oh, and the journalists who did this mysteriously died. Xbox Kinect. I'm sad to say I agree. I got an Xbox One when they were bundled with Kinect. The only thing I used it for was Xbox On and Xbox Off lol. Nothing was worse than getting red carded in FIFA when the mic heard you swear at the TV. Movie Pass. I sure got my money's worth while it was around. I never watched more movies in a month than when I had Movie Pass. Such a horribly consumer friendly concept that was never going to work long term. Unfortunately after I ended my subscription they signed me back up at least two more times without my consent. But I caught on and cancelled before they got any more of my money. This one might be a bit obscure just because I've only ever met one other person familiar with it. But Google's Project Era modular smartphone was looking like it could have been the end all be all of smartphones. Based off the Phonoblox idea of having a Lego like hot swappable module phone. The idea was that you could switch out any components of the phone on the fly. Camera. Fingerprint scanner. Even different quality screens. Conceptually, it really looked like it could take over the phone market. As it would lead to people not having to buy whole new phones anymore. But rather replacement or upgraded parts to a phone they already liked. Thereby reducing costs and increasing utility. You don't want a phone with 5 cameras that inflate the cost unnecessarily. Just buy a 1 camera module. You want a 1440p Super AMOLED screen to replace your 720p regular screen? Buy one and swap it in. However, like many Google projects, it died off for myriad reasons and the long-standing era of $1000 smartphone slabs lived on. Yes I remember this. I was very excited when they announced it. I wonder what happened. I guess maybe because of comparability issues with multiple hardware systems from a multitude of manufacturers who have their own protocols. But damn wish they went through with it. Embedded code is pretty hard to get right when you're working with a single professor. I imagine it's worse when you want components to be hot swappable. 
other boards, I remember in a span of 3 months everyone had them and showed them off and then they just disappeared. Edit. After further investigation I discovered they were banned in my province a number of years ago. I always hate the fact that they were called hoverboards. Same. I refuse to ever call them that. Actual floating hoverboards were always shorthand for a holy grail product that would officially herald us as being in the sci-fi future. And instead of being invented, we got a shitty sideways skateboard thing that caught on fire, yet successfully stole the name. It's like if a new backpack with a built-in Samsung tablet, named the Jetpack trademark sign, came and went and now that term was ruined after decades of actually meaning something. Mini disc. TBH. I miss mini discs. They were great. And the satisfying mechanical click you'd hear whenever you shut the lid. Man I miss my mini disc. I gave it away to one of my high school buddies. 2020. We won't get a month of 4 stroke 20 for a whole hundred years though. Well hey, at least 2048 will be extra special. It's a power of 2. At the time video calling with your phone completely flopped because 3G couldn't support it. There was so much advertising about this thing that was meant to be huge but the tech really didn't work yet. But it did blow up later on with 4G, better phones, Wi-Fi and more public spaces. And COVID. I never video chatted with anyone before COVID. My friend who studies medicine had to install Second Life about 2 years ago for a class meeting. I don't get why they couldn't have used Skype but okay. As a CS student I wondered WTF Second Life was doing on all the lab PCS. I thought it was some kind of joke until people with PhDs started talking about how great of a collaboration tool it was. It wasn't. That's hilarious. HD DVD still remember half the movies being blue and the others red. This was gonna be my contribution to the thread. I worked at a Best Buy. Future shop. At the time in home theater and I remember all the 30 minutes conversations with customers about if they should buy a Blu-ray or a HD DVD. Connie 2012. What? Sharing a video on Facebook doesn't end the use of child soldiers? How are and micro arkansas in general? They're fairly popular with pretty niche audiences. Apparently the OIR is a really good platform for emulating. But the problem is you can't really advertise a product that's really good at something that's in a grey area legally. Amazon's shopping buttons. They pushed really hard for those and I never saw the point. Those things are hilarious. Amazon practically gave them away because they were sure they'd make it back in increased sales. But the only people I ever saw buying them were the maker crowd who just wanted the parts. This is why my husband bought them. And there they sit. Asbestos technically it was a hit. Right until it flopped when people figured out the whole inhaling rock fibers is not healthy thing. Not to mention that asbestos is damn near indestructible. Its inability to be broken down is what was causing the health issues. Soap shoes. These were like normal shoes. But you could grind on rails with them via an indent in the sole. If you heard of these things from somewhere that wasn't Sonic Adventure 2. Please tell me where. And please tell me where I can buy a pair. I wanted those so bad in 5th grade but my parents swore I would break my neck. I recently found a documentary on the main kid in all the commercials. I think it was called The Last Soper. Dut. It's on YouTube. About 20 minutes or so. He's in his 40s now. Still so pillared it. Title was Soap or Die as the redditor below be pointed out. Soap or Die the guy's name is Ryan Jornzomis. He's a pickup artist in Vegas who still soaps in his free time. P. T. Demo. This one still hurts. I know. That one felt like a masterpiece in the making. Edit. I feel like I need to clarify that I do not think video calling is useless or unpopular. I understand how it has helped out a great deal with medical, legal, educational and other fields. I also understand that the younger generation is a lot more comfortable with casual use of video calls. My point is that since the telephone came into widespread usage, there was this sense that the change to audio and video was inevitable and that it would be become the default way to communicate over distance. 
Until the cordless handset became affordable, you were required to be in a specific location to make or receive a phone call, and their projections of telecommunications developments of the future were predicated on phones being in fixed locations. What I'm saying is that I don't believe video calling will ever supplant the text message as the default way to transmit short informational messages. Video calling may gain popularity for chatting and socializing. But the text is more or less here to stay for short messages. Nobody wants to go through the hi. How are you? I'm fine. Did you see? That thing? So, the reason I called is, preliminary thing for simple informative statements. If you go all the way back to the 1930s through the 2000s, there was this assumption that the public wanted video calling, and wanted it to be the default method of contacting people. This was completely backward from the truth. The overwhelming popularity of SMS text messaging demonstrated that the public wanted less, not more. Not saying that video conferencing doesn't have advantages or uses and isn't popular in those spheres. But, the idea of a video call being the default form of contact is something futurists assumed would be reality that never came to be. We definitely have the technology for it. There's just no need to physically lock eyes with someone, or even have to hear them, just to tell them to get milk. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.